Pencil Kings, 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 Pencil Kings. But yeah, there's definitely beautiful <laughs> magic out there for everyone that you just have to access it by eliminating all the the things that stopped it in the first place. It's been a little while since I've recorded a podcast. I took a little break, recorded a lot in advance, but you guys never knew that because that's the magic of the internet. And today we've got an awesome guest. I'm really excited to talk with Ahmed Alduri, and I believe he just goes by Med. Yeah. Uh, hey, Med, how you doing? How you doing? You can call me Med, Good. Ahmed, Ahmed if you can. Anything's fine. Ahmed. Yeah. And so um, Med did a lesson for us, and I was just blown away by his... I think it's just your voice. I feel like you ha- you're like a natural teacher, but there's something about your voice and these little quirky stories that you tell while you're drawing um, that I just got a kick out of. And then I thought the instruction was awesome to boot. So well, thank you. Welcome thank to the call. Yeah, I'm excited. Why don't you Why don't you give people like a one to two minute just overview of kind of what you're doing professionally, just to set the stage, and then we'll get into your story after that. Sure. Uh, right now I'm. Uh a concept artist uh, for video games at a company called ArenaNet. And if you've ever seen or played Guild Wars 2, uh, that's what we work on. Um, I wear a lot of hats because um, I've I've done a range of different types of art um, from tiny little icons to uh, entire paintings for like a loading screen. Or uh, then there's like a series of different character designs and armor sets and weapons and it's been a really fun time um and before that it was more like um i worked at theme park places movies uh but definitely video games have been far more fulfilling all right so i think the best place to start is like you've done you're doing so many things like you said wearing so many different hats but you don't start there um where did it all begin i I, i've heard your story before i know you've told it before but for our listeners for the sake of our listeners um where'd you get started well i mean i started when i was two i guess because i was always drawing but uh, i took it seriously i guess i mean i was i was always drawing so in, in elementary school middle school high school i was sketching in my notebooks instead of doing classwork all that fun stuff um but Around middle school, I got a, my first Wacom graphics tablet. So that's when I got my start with Photoshop and all that. But then I, uh, throughout high school, I heard about Art Center called Design, right? And I've been like aspiring to go there because uh, Craig Mullins went there and, and Ryan Church and all the, well, I think he went there. Um, and, and so I'm like, there's, there's an industry out there, right? Uh, but I still didn't really know what, what you can do as an artist. I knew you could do something but my parents weren't fully convinced. Uh, it was a really hard time because we just don't know about it, especially in the middle of Ohio, right, which is where I grew up. And, and what year was that? Like when were you graduating? I graduated high school in 2006. Okay. Um, yeah. Really? Like even then it wasn't uh, – because I graduated in 2000, uh, or 1999 and I f- – feel like by 2006, it, this stuff must be fairly common knowledge. Right. Maybe not. I mean, all the art was online, right? But it wasn't clear that, hey, you could work at a video game company or a movie company to do this. Instead, it was like, oh, it's a pretty painting on conceptart.org. I don't know what it's for. I mean, it looks like a movie, but I didn't, you know, I, I didn't piece it together at the time. Um, gotcha. Yeah. Um, anyway, I, I ended up going to engineering school, something completely... Uh, not what I wanted to do. And after a semester, I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to go to art. Uh, so I kind of left that school and uh, went to community college for uh, life drawing, just, just you know, regular things to kind of get by and do art. And eventually I went to CCAD, Columbus College of Art and Design, um, because still at this point, I didn't think I could get into Art Center. Well, getting in was the first battle, but paying for it is the other. So I spent time at CCAD and then took a semester off to make a portfolio for Art Center, and, and it worked out. I ended up uh, going there. So, And from there, it's just the people you meet, the connections, the teachers. Uh, my first job was uh, <clears throat> with a teacher I had, Scott Robertson, who has an amazing series of uh, 
books, the design studio press books on how to draw, how to how to render, how to draw perspective. Really great things. And uh, through him, I got another job uh, under Dylan Cole, who was the who is the lead concept artist for Avatar 2 right now. He did Return of the King, Lord of the Rings, and I did a project with him. And from there, I went to Rhythm and Hue. So it was a big series of small jobs wow. to bigger jobs. Yeah. Yeah, but that's basically the who's who of um, like the the top art instructors for the last I don't know ten years or so. Dylan Cole and and Scott Robertson. Like I learned a bunch from watching Scott Robertson's DVDs on perspective. And that's awesome that you got to study under those people or, or work with those people. But I mean, you're always studying and always learning, but oh, yeah. 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 It was, it was really lucky. Cause if I hadn't gone to that school, I would have just not been exposed to that. Um, maybe if I was still in the area in LA, it would have worked out, but yeah, just the proximity I think caused it to happen. Okay. So you, you graduated, you've kind of got the, maybe the ultimate launching pad out of school. Um, <laughs> yeah. Doors are opening. I'm sure doors are opening for you left and right when you're uh, just meeting the right people makes such a big difference. Sure. And then we also have to hmm. be able to uh, make cool stuff. Right. Um, you know, and there's so much wonderful opportunities of learning uh, online, you know, because like I got a lot of messages about, well, I can't afford Art Center. I can't go there, blah, blah, blah. You know, or I'm in like Bulgaria or something like that. Um, but the, with the internet, it's all here. Um, everything that I wish I was, you know, exposed to is now there, whether it's through pencil Kings or, uh, Noman. And, and it's like there, there's no shortage of, of exposure to that now. Yeah, I completely agree. You can chart your own path. I, I feel like sometimes it's not the clearest path. Like, you know, where you want to get to, you know, being a concept artist or being some kind of a video game artist, but then there's also specialities within that. Oh yeah. Um, and you've got to fill in a lot of the blanks, but the main thing is just to take those first steps and then just continue to build momentum. So why don't you tell us a little bit about, uh, what you're doing with arena net? I, I haven't <laughs> played guild wars, but I, you know, I'm going to get some hate over this one, but I was never a fan of world of Warcraft just because of the art style. All of my friends um, played World of Warcraft. And for me, I just liked something that was a little bit darker, a little bit more serious. And then Guild Wars came out. And I was like, wow, this is the game that I want to play. Uh, but at that time, I was over in China and internet was terrible. So I just didn't get into the whole MMO thing. But um, the artwork that I've seen from Guild Wars 2 is just jaw-droppingly amazing. I have an old coworker who's working on that game uh, in the concept department. And what do you do there? <laughs> You know, I totally get it. I never got in, into the, the MMO scene. I never played World of Warcraft. Um, I, I played Guild Wars when I got this job offer so that I could, you know, know what the game was about. I still don't really play it. I mean, I have a level 80, but I just don't, I can't, de the, the time that it takes to like get involved in a game like that, I would rather draw, right? So what do I do there? Uh, I can't talk about it. Actually, it is. is I mean, you get it. Uh, there's like an N, the, the NDA <laughs> stuff. I don't. I'm trying to think. Well, no, but you, yeah. but you're 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 working in the concept department, and um, you. Well, actually, how about this? Maybe you could tell us a little bit about how your day breaks up, because I feel like there's okay. a lot of misconceptions, or people they think of you know. Okay, I understand what you do, what the end product looks like, and I understand kind of the process okay. of. Okay. Uh, from watching videos or whatever of how these people work. But like, do you go in and you grab a coffee and then you just sit down, put on your music and, and rock out all day? Or is it, how? I don't know, what is it like, you know, from your perspective? A day in the life of Ahmed al -Duri. Let's see. Okay, so <laughs> I wake up, you know, get to work. I, I walk in. Uh, yeah, there's coffee, tea. I usually grab tea. Um, I put milk and honey. Uh, so as a concept artist, you might be working on, like I said, several different things. You're wearing a lot of different hats. Um, let's say I'm, I'm coming up with a character design or a costume, right? I'll go in and, you know, in, in the early morning, I might be sketching, right? Or I could be collecting a lot of research. I've actually spent a lot of time on Pinterest just finding, oh, this could look cool. Oh, that could look cool. And, you know, there goes four hours, right? Um, but that's okay because it's about researching it researching and if it's that if that's what it takes to get the right design it's like they're very encouraging about you know really accessing your your top creativity right and so in order to do that you know you spend a lot of time researching and i'm 
drawing and maybe the second half of the day after lunch sometimes we go out sometimes we stay in there's a whole game room that people spend time in there's foosball and video games anyway uh and tons of free snacks but uh yeah so then i come back and i might refine some things toss out a bunch of other things then get feedback from other from the other artists from the lead especially working under daniel dochu he's he's a genius uh i've learned so much so much from him uh and of course the other artists as well like Jamie Rose, she's my other lead. Um, and it's been amazing. And I, I've, I really consider it to be like art center 2.0, right? Cause I'm, it's like, I'm getting paid to, to learn, you know, uh, it's pretty cool. And what, what would you say it's like when you're showing your work to – well, actually, there's two things I want to bring up. And one of them is what is it like when you're bringing your work up to the lead? Is it a formal meeting where you're sitting down and there's a bunch of people around a table and your stuff's up on like a wall or you just get them to come over to your desk and they give you like two minutes of time and then you keep going? What, well, for, yeah, I think just for somebody who's never had that experience, mm. what is it kind of like? So at other places that I've worked, uh, I worked at a place called Thinkwell for theme park design, and that was where we had to, you know, design theme parks and rides and stuff. We printed things out, put it on the wall, and we had uh, a review time. So the the leads came by and yada yada. Um, the way it's been at ArenaNet is really you're just in your little zone and you're working on your thing. And um, if you're ready to show, you just send it out, um, or you you walk up to the lead and say, Hey, do you want to come check it out? Or sometimes they're just walking by and it's, you know, like, Oh, that works. That doesn't work. Do this. Don't do that. And, uh, it's, it's more organic. I think here, um, I don't know if it's the thing in the video game industry. Cause that's, this is my first video game job, but before it was very like <laughs> robotic, you know, there's like at five o'clock we're sh- every day we're showing what we're doing, blah, 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 blah. But here it's like, you know, you do it till it's awesome. I like that. So the other thing that I wanted to ask and, and actually more to highlight was how much time you're spending doing research on this stuff because this is something that I see people fall down on time and time and time again where they're, you know, when it's time to draw, that means it's just time or when it's time to make your art, you just sit in and you start doing your drawing. But when I s- watch how other people are doing it, there's this huge reference collection period and it just the reference library just keeps growing and growing and growing but what do you why do you think that is that people don't realize that they that they need to draw from some kind of reference or to at least expose themselves to some kind of reference before they start going into it because it seems like it's not an intuitive process otherwise it would be happening with more people that is a great question um yeah and i definitely want to talk about that because what we see is the tip of the iceberg you know you go on online on art station or whatever uh, and you see all this beautiful artwork and sometimes they post their process but the 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 part of the iceberg that you don't see is this huge chunk and like a big uh, you know maybe like more than a third of that is is research right and for some reason we uh we assume that these artists just come up with this stuff out of nowhere but really there's like okay like you said like a wall of inspiration uh, a mood board here and there. And we we tend to kind of steal energy. And I, or, well, I don't know how to word this, but you, you kind of draw the magic that you see in your inspiration and you put it into whatever it is that you're doing. And for some reason, a lot of people avoid that, I think, because they fear that they'll be called out for being unoriginal. And so they just skip that whole part of research, right? Because they're like, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm good enough. I'll just come up with my own thing without research. But really, nothing is truly original. Everything originates from somewhere and it compiles with other things and the result is original. But I think that most people miss that and they 
totally overlook it. And uh, I think because of that, a lot of artwork out there is suffering. Yeah, definitely. I, I know yesterday I was looking at Legend of Zelda Wind Wind Waker or Wind Walker. Wind I can't Waker. Remember yeah. What it was? Yeah. Yeah, Wind Waker. I was like, where? What is this style called? Mm-hmm. Um, and there wasn't a, a definitive name of what it was called. It, everything just said it was cell shaded. Yeah. And then I happened on something that said, well, the artist who designed it, and I can't remember his name off the top of my head now, was that he remembered these cartoons that he had. He was a Japanese artist, and he remembered these cartoons that he had watched in the early '80s. And then you know, there's another blog post where like, here's the cartoons. And then when I looked at it, I was just like, wow, you know. Here it is. It's all laid out. Like, yes, there's some differences, but uh, it's so similar that you can't say there's no connection. Right. Yeah, I actually really love the style in that game. And I think uh, in terms of visual, because you're an artist, I'm an artist, we, we have our own kind of taste. Everyone has taste. But I think because from working in the industry and seeing how things happen, there's this big gravitation towards hyper-realistic uh, gritty, dark, you know, and it works for some games, you know, like Batman and, and Bloodborne and all that stuff. But to me, something like Wind Waker is nice and colorful and you get to feel like you're happy, you know, like it's, it's a feel good game. And I think I, well, I hope that more games go towards that. And there are a couple like Gigantic by Motika, Overwatch by Blizzard, and they're going towards a more colorful style. And I like that. But yeah, uh, that'd be interesting to see those cartoons. I'll have to look that up after. So I'm curious, I've seen that you've started to do uh, some lessons and, and teaching people on YouTube. And what was the inspiration behind that? Or where did that come from? Yeah, I think uh, YouTube is great is a great platform for that because you have access to so many people. And uh, for me, I, I'm using it as a tool to just be myself. And, you know, th- there's like a lot of artists out there that are sort of doing the same thing, but there's this mask that they kind of wear. Like, oh, I'm going to put on this professional mask so I can you know, be professional and like, hello, welcome to my tutorial. Like I, I, to me, it's all boring. Like, come on, just cut, cut to the chase. You're just talking to other people. And so for me, it's been a pretty good platform of self-expression because I don't have to worry about rules or, you know, I've done, uh, like all these things and people connect with you directly by comments and messages and you get to know them and you have little jokes with them. And I think that that kind of community building has been really fun. And at first it was just a couple videos here and there, but now it's becoming like, I, this is, I like doing this. It's fun. And also, you know, it, it prevent, it, it presents an opportunity to develop a platform that uh, of subscribers and followers that you'll have pretty much forever. Um, and it's like also connected to my Instagram and, and DeviantArt and Facebook. So it's like when I post something, they, they all see it in, on all the platforms and uh, it's interlinked and it's a big thing. Uh, yeah, that I'd say that's that's what the inspiration was. And also to get information to people um, because there's a lot of amazing artists that just don't know how to teach, right? I think there's a – like I've had so many teachers um, even at Art Center who are very good artists but they don't know how to teach Teaching is an art form of itself. You have to, we we have this information, this knowledge, how to draw, how to paint, how to write a motorcycle, whatever. And you have to find the most effective, efficient, simple way to get that information into somebody else's head. Now, if you if you cover that information with a bunch of hurdles and difficulties and big words, it's like, why? Why are you confusing your students, right? So for me, it's like an opportunity to show, look, you can learn this stuff easily you know uh you don't have to uh, be intimidated by these super fancy ways of talking like who cares right so yeah that that's probably one main thing one reason that i'm doing that yeah i need to ask a follow-up because i'm i see people and i know that for us for pencil kings we're on several different platforms putting out content all over the place but it's it feels like a big task to manage all that stuff Mm -hmm. and there's a team behind Pencil Kings and you're an individual and with a day job that's busy and other yeah. commitments and producing your own content. How do you juggle all that stuff or is, or is there a simpler way that I just am, don't know about? Because I feel like social media and me don't mix, just like forums and me don't mix. I just – chat rooms, I'm, I'm awesome in a chat room. But uh, for forums and stuff, I don't know. There's just something that doesn't jive with me that makes it – it feels like it's there's a lot of effort and I feel like – you should go towards the things that are easy and so aren't maybe not easy, but they just natural uh, sure. versus the things that feels like you're pushing a boulder up a hill. But for you, how do you manage all that stuff? 
So I I can't keep up with forums either because you have to go in, refresh, I don't know. Um, but in terms of social media and stuff, really it's – at first it was kind of difficult. But really if you just have a list of, okay, if I'm going to post this video, I also have to remind people on Facebook, Twitter, DeviantArt, whatever. Um, and it just sort of becomes pretty – fluid I don't, I don't know i haven't had too much trouble with that because i was already posting at those places anyway now i'm just throwing in a link like saying by the way if you want to see how i drew this click this link that kind of thing um also what's keeping me going is just the mindset of you know at the at the other side of all this i know that i'll be able to eventually have uh, more freedom um so it's kind of like laying down the groundwork and that alone kind of just makes me what you know kind of grind or hustle there's a lot of business books that talk about this you know there's a lot of difficulties in the beginning but once you get past them it's like everything else becomes unnecessary so i don't know i I think it it's something that you get used to Makes sense. Um, the thing that that I, I feel like tripped me up in the beginning was um, it, this was early days, like 2006, and it was how much email I was getting mm-hmm. uh, from people, and I just felt like every morning when I woke up, I dreaded opening my oh, inbox yeah. because it's like, oh, and it's not that I didn't want to talk to people, but it was just too much that it got to the point where it's like, oh, I I don't know what to do, and then my inbox, you know, just keep, keep that number just keeps going higher and higher and higher. I didn't quite hit the the uh, you know nine 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 messages in my inbox, but <laughs> yeah, I was getting up there. Yeah, I, well, I have a ton of like spam email, well not spam email, but like you know newsletters and stuff. But I do get a lot of messages from uh, people that want to get into art and that stuff. Um, honestly, I can't answer them all, and I don't. You know, I I answer them when. I can. And well, what I guess more when I'm in the mood, because if I'm not in the mood, then they're going to get an answer that they don't want to hear. Um, and so, you know, I'd rather be actually spending the time drawing and making more content than, you know, responding to all the individual things. But I do get back to the ones that I really feel deserve an answer. Um, because some of them, I, I feel like I, it, all I have to do is write up a couple sentences and they'll be on their way on what they want to learn. So, um, but aside from that, I think, um, maybe I'll get better after I, if I, you know, do that stuff, uh, full time. Well, maybe you can weigh in on this. I've always encouraged people to, to try and reach out to other people because you can only do so much on your own or learning from videos or some, or books or whatever. And someone's going to have to bridge a gap for you at some point or open a door or whatever. So you're going to have to reach out to somebody, but these people are busy or you're busy. And I've been telling people to, you have to show the person that you're serious and that you're, Mm. um, and, and also make it easy for them. So I was going to reach out to you and I've been watching your videos and, uh, I want to be a concept artist, but I'm in high school and in the middle of nowhere, you know, like where I grew up and I would reach out and say something like, Hey man, I've been watching your videos and they're awesome. I love the the latest video that you did on Spider Man painting. Um, I I used the same technique and did a Venom painting. Here it is. What do you think? And then um, just attach the picture in there. And then I don't know if I would expect a response or not, but I feel like I've made the first step in letting you know that I'm serious and I put serious effort into the artwork. Sure. And that opens the door a little bit to follow up again um, because I'm assuming that you open most of your email. Oh, I see them all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I see a lot of those actually where they attach the thing. Um, that's exactly right. If you want to contact me or anybody, uh, 
that's already working or a professional, chances are they do see your email. But if it's not, like you said, easy for the, the reader or whoever you're sending it to, uh, then th- we're just going to delete it. Like we don't have time to click a link to your portfolio and then sign in and whatever. No, put everything right there um, and keep your paragraphs or your your information just very short, like a couple of sentences don't give me your whole backstory of why you're doing art because your grandma inspired you and you're like, that's cool and on. I love that. But I don't have time to, you know, get into that stuff. So, yeah, I, I suppose that is really great. Keep reaching out. And even if they don't get back to you right away, if I don't get back to you right away, I eventually might. Right. Um, because I was in that position, too. Like I, I've uh, I remember actually just before uh, my graduation show last year, I I invited Ian McKeg to see the grad show because we put up a bunch of art, and I did that like maybe two weeks ahead of time. And I'm, I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send in my portfolio and be like, hey, I'd love to see you here, um, and it'd be amazing. You're such an inspiration to me. And in the back of my head, I'm like, well, he's obviously busy. He's working on Star Wars. There's no way he's gonna get back to me. And then a week later, he messages me back. He's like, hey, uh, you got really great work. Yeah, sure, I'd love to uh, show up to the art center grad show. I'm like, Oh, that's awesome. And so that was really exciting. Um, unfortunately he did show up, but he didn't, I don't know if he was in the right part of the building or whatever. He emailed me back the next day saying, Hey, I couldn't find you or the grad show or anything. Um, but, but it still works if you, if you message people, if you email them, but don't annoy them, right? Uh, just send one email and yeah, that's what I would say. Just one and done. Like never, like I guess I would say send send an email. Don't expect a response, but expect that it's been seen. And then uh, the next like awesome thing that you do, uh, maybe send another thing to this sure. person, but not not necessarily the next day. Like you need time to to work on yeah. your stuff and and make it good. And to, but I feel like this is showing that person that you're serious and that you're not you're not going to give up and you're not just necessarily focusing on one person because mm. maybe the person you're, you're trying to focus on, maybe their inbox is broken and they don't actually receive any okay. email and it's nobody's yeah. fault, but, um, you're reaching out to several people and you just, you keep at it and it's really just a numbers game. Somebody will have time at some point and get, and sure. get back to you. And help. Yeah, I guess you're right. I guess what I was thinking about is like, yeah, the next day, like constantly emailing that person. But yeah, I mean, if you have uh, stuff and you're working on stuff, do, I guess, periodically reach out to those people. And yeah, you're right. Because if you, if I was to see somebody and they email me or a cool image and I don't have time to respond and I forget about them, but they send me another cool, cool image a couple weeks later. Yeah. I, I guess I would be like, Oh yeah, this, this is that, that one person. So yeah, good point on that. Do you remember when you were in back in Ohio, did you reach out to anybody or make any efforts like that? Not with professionals. I was, there's a forum called, uh, Saijin forums. Are you familiar with? Yeah. Yeah. So I would post on there and I guess I talked to other students that were also at art center, um, while I was in Ohio. So I didn't really, I didn't reach out to like professionals. I, I didn't even think it was like a thing you could do. Right. Cause my small minded Ohio world was just like, I didn't know, you know, but yeah, you can. I, I like, there's a, couple that I had done I I got into Ubisoft studio mm-hmm. uh, when I was just starting out and, and just said like hey uh, I'm into video games I'm an artist and I was just wondering if I could tour your studio and they're like yeah. sure <laughs> they're like open the doors like there's all these opportunities that I feel that it's easy to say oh that'll never work or nobody would why mm-hmm. would anybody give me the time of day but it's like I don't know maybe that maybe those companies are having trouble recruiting and they love having people come in um, this probably isn't the case now but um, they love having people to come in because who knows, you know, where that's going to lead. You never that's know. That's true. Yeah. Oh, was that in Montreal? No, that was in Shanghai. One of my, um, my flame outs. I tried to be an animator there and, uh, you know, didn't, he- didn't hear back from Ubisoft. So, <laughs> oh, so all, these, all these little, little, uh, you know, successes and failures along the way, but you just keep going and you find your path.
so what do you what are you working on these days? I guess that we'll we'll get towards the end of this uh, podcast. And uh, what coming up is are you excited about? That that's not necessarily NDA stuff, but just you personally. I, mean, I don't know. It doesn't have to be your art. I feel like I'm just fascinated uh, hearing your stories and the way that you tell, tell things. <laughs> oh man. Uh, well, there's a lot of things on the horizon. Um, well, besides art, I guess, uh, well, I guess it's all related to art. There's like, I spent like a lot of time trying to find my, my voice. And I think everyone has this problem. Well, I mean, this, this journey really, and they're trying to find their voice. What do I really like? Do I, do I actually want to do fan art of blah, 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 blah? Um, or am I doing it just because of just because it's popular online. So I think for me on the horizon is like, I want to, I want to see what happens when I kind of refrain from, from the internet, you know, and kind of, uh, separate the audience from my work. And I think something cool will happen and I'll be able hopefully to access like kind of the, the stuff that I actually really was drawn to, like, what is the inner child uh, of, of myself? Um, what would he do as an artist versus the professional who needs to make a living and uh, trying to get a name out there, all that stuff. Um, so that that's kind of hopefully on the horizon. And besides that, you know, just fitness, running. Uh, hopefully I'll get married soon. I don't know, just all that fun stuff. I think it's actually a great point that you brought up about the inner child. And after spending, you know, getting burnt out and spending time away from art, I, st I really started to think, like, what was it in the beginning? Like, what did I lose along the way that uh, I need to rekindle? Mm -hmm. And it yeah. was sort of that childhood thing where it was all just experimentation and there was no wrong moves. It was like sometimes you might not be happy with what you're drawing, but it's just this this constant forward momentum. There was no sort of plateaus. You just kept going and creating things and it was fun to do. And you're, you're experimenting and playing. And I think now as an adult, you can totally bring that back. It's, it's really just a decision and, and saying like, all right, I'm not going to try to be so such a perfectionist. Yeah. What's fun? Like, what's fun to draw? And then exactly. draw that. See how it goes. And then, oh, what else is fun? Like, see, just see where that rabbit hole leads to. Right, right. And I've kind of, like, touched on it a little bit. I'm like, oh, I, I'm in the zone. I'm in the zone. But when I, I'm in the zone, I'm like, I'm in the zone. And then I, I'm not in the zone anymore because <laughs> I've, like, highlighted it as something. Um, but, yeah, th there's definitely beautiful <laughs> magic out there for everyone that you just have to access it by eliminating all the – the things that stopped it in the first place. All right. Well, any last words before we wrap up here? Well, uh, Mitch, thank you for bringing me onto the podcast. I think it's really great what you're doing. And uh, my hat's off to you. And thank you, all you listeners who are listening. Um, I hope you become awesome artists and just, you know, have an awesome, fulfilling life. Yeah. Cool. And where, where are the best places to find you online, Med? So you can find me on Facebook, my website, YouTube, uh, DeviantArt. I don't know. Not in that order. Instagram. But is it just typing in your yeah. name? I feel like your name is fairly unique, although I could be totally wrong. There are a couple other Ahmed al Duris out there. I have to find them and destroy them. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> there, uh, if you type in Ahmed al Duri, A H M E D al Duri, A L D O O R I dot com, um, that'll take you to my website, which I'm working on. And from there, you'll be able to find uh, all my other stuff, like uh, YouTube, Instagram, and all that fun stuff. Awesome. And as usual, we'll have show notes from this at pencilkings.com slash podcast. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And if you're listening, uh, Med's got a lot of great videos on YouTube. And he's also got some amazing courses. I was just blown away when I watched them on Pencil Kings about first designing a character and then coloring a character. So thank you so much, Med. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Ah, you talk like a fool. I would trade a century of practice for an ounce of inspiration.